Let's do another one on immigration. We haven't done that in a while, and it really seems like the Republicans are going to be hitting this one hard, because <laughs> even with everything that's going on, uh, they try to talk about one thing. And, of course, the Democrats got to stand up in the middle of it all, no matter what they're doing, and say how horrible Trump is and he needs to be stopped. Well, the Republicans are doing their own thing about, well, we got to stop uh, the immigrants. They're flooding across our borders and raping everyone and things like that. And, yep, always campaigning. Always campaigning. So a lot of this, it's really just a, another confirmation of what we know, but that's how you know you're right. You keep doing new evidence, new reports, and you see what it does. And so this one is from a uh, report in the Cato Institute by David J. Beer. And um, I'm not going to go over the actual report because it's really long, but he wrote a good blog post that just uh, gives you a good summary of it, gives you the data, see, and you can look at the report yourself for the details. So all the links are below as usual. And it's just talking about why legal immigration is impossible for nearly everyone. Why are there so many illegals? Why are so many people crossing the board illegally? And as I have said, for years and years and years and years and years, the reason why is because it's easier to swim the Rio Grande than to climb Mount Bureaucracy. And that's exactly what this policy analysis is going to show. So. Getting started, the report is a uniquely comprehensive and jargon-free to the extent possible explanation of U.S. legal immigration. So you won't have to, you won't be, you know, a lot of statistical terminology or legalese or everything like that. Where necessary, yes, but you don't really need like any big, you know, science background to be able to understand it. Contrary to public perception, immigrants cannot simply wait and get a green card after a few years. Legal immigration is less like waiting in line and more like winning the lottery. It happens, but it's so rare that it is irrational to expect it in any individual case. And this is what you hear from people. They go, well, my grandpa came here illegally. And if he came here illegally, why can't they come? They can just do what he did. No, they can't. No, they can't, because as we'll see, when your grandpa came over, Things were very, very, very different. All right, and here's a figure showing the U.S. immigration system. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, this is what, just follow this simple process. Gee. <laughs> Why are people coming here illegally? Let me think. So what they've really done is set up a system where they're guilty until proven innocent. And th this is yet another thing we keep seeing this with on top of all sorts of other things, you know, including things like gun ownership. And th this is this is one of the cases where the Republicans do it. So, yes, Republicans suck, too. Always remember that. Until the Immigration Act of 1924, everyone in the world was eligible to immigrate to the United States unless the government proved they fell into an ineligible category. In other words, innocent until proven guilty. You were assumed to be welcome to the United States unless there's something like, oh, wait a minute. Um, so maybe you've you know committed some horrendous crime or something like that and say, okay, yeah, with that criminal record, we're not going to let you in. Since then, the foundational principle of U.S. immigration law is that everyone in the world is ineligible to immigrate unless they prove to the government they fit into an eligible category. The result is that over 99% of all those wanting to immigrate cannot do so legally. They are having their liberty of movement restrained. Because remember, that's all we're talking about. Immigration is just another word for moving. That's all it is. And you can see it in the 
chart here, the people who want to work. Well, mostly they're going to be workers, and then a tiny amount of families, and then a really, really slender amount of refugees. And the people who began the process, who were actually able to get started on the process, was 20%. And then the ones who were permitted to enter legally, 0.6%. So. If you want to come to the United States, you've got to fit into one of five very narrow categories. One is refugees. Another is the diversity lottery. Three is family sponsorship. Four is employment-based self-sponsorship. Hey, I've got these skills. I want to uh, come to America to work. And employer sponsorship. An employer in America says, yes, I want to hire that guy to come in here to work. These categories are extraordinarily narrow. Few people can qualify, and thanks to low immigration caps, those who do are often subject to decades-long waiting periods before they can enter legally. We'll go over all five of these. Starting with the refugee program. The lucky few. The rules limit admission to those who fear return based on persecution by a government or someone the government refuses to control and only if the persecutor is motivated by someone's race, religion, political opinion, nationality, or social group. So they want to get you for any other reason. Well, sorry, you don't qualify as a refugee. So already that's way limited. Limited beyond what it should be. More importantly, the program will only process refugees if they flee from their homes to a group of about 30 countries. And it will only accept applicants from about 30 countries. Your country is not on the list. They can oppress you as much as they want. Applicants usually need a referral from the UN, and they have a less than 1% chance of receiving such a referral. Moreover, the program has a cap. This is going to be a recurring theme. All of these are capped. Arbitrary numbers. Even if you tick every single box, even if you're like the absolute perfect person to emigrate to the United States, if that cap is full, you're not getting in. And the government has adopted processing procedures that make filling that cap extremely difficult. Barely one in 5,000 displaced persons will be admitted to the United States under the refugee program. The figure below shows the increasing number of displaced persons and the decreasing number of admissions under the refugee program. Yeah, so here's the chart. Um, the displaced persons worldwide, fairly constant, it looks like, ups and downs, until about 2006, and then it starts going up. What about the uh, refugees and their family admitted? Goes down. Down, down, down. Yeah. So, I mean, it was even going down at a point where the uh, the, the number was fairly steady. It actually went up. It looks like during the Bush and Obama years. And then it went way down in uh, the Trump years, staying down in the Joe Biden years. So we'll see this too as a recurring theme. Biden with immigration ends up being just as bad, if not worse, than Trump. And yet the Republicans say, well, under Biden, the immigrants are just flooding and the flood of immigrants across our border. It's BS. It's a lot of crap. All right, the diversity lottery. Four basic rules here. They have to show that they can support themselves at or above the poverty line. Applicants must have at least a high school degree or work experience in a job typically requiring a college degree. Only people from countries 
from which fewer than 50,000 people emigrated to the United States in the last five years can apply, and that excludes a majority of the world's population. And the cap again. There are only 55,000 slots awarded through an annual lottery. The chances of winning the lottery and getting a green card have plummeted more than 90% since the first lottery was held in 1995. Yeah, diversity, lottery, entrance, and the share receiving green cards. So you see the entrance. They're going up and up and up, except they kind of went down during COVID because of travel restrictions. But look at the share receiving green cards. Down. Down. Down since the Bush years. Down through the Obama years. Down through the Trump years. Staying down through... The uh, Biden years, there's that little tick up at the end. But remember, that last overall share in 2021 dropped down because of COVID. So as a uh, proportion of it, see the share receiving green card sign, that's a percentage. That's a percentage of that line. So yeah, it's a bigger percentage, but it's a bigger percentage of a lower amount that was applying. So don't go thinking that improved. A okay, family sponsorship. Only the closest relatives and endless waits. That's the experience of so many people who want to come here. Want to come here and work and make their lives better and make our lives better as well. And they can't. The biggest limitation on family sponsorship is having a qualifying sponsor. It's reserved primarily for the closest relatives, spouses, children, legal permanent residents, as well as siblings and parents of adult U.S. citizens and minor children and spouses of those relatives can join, except in the cases of parents, minor children, and spouses of U.S. citizens. And also there's a cap. Always a cap. They gotta cap everything. That's just what they do. They go around, is that a thing? Cap it. Is that a number? Cap it. Is that a statistic? Cap it. Gotta have caps. Because it shouldn't be up to family members who want to take them in. It shouldn't be up to employers who want to hire them. It shouldn't be up to landlords who want to rent to them or sell property to them or whatever. Not up to any of them. It's up to bureaucrats. All hail the high priests in government from whom all blessings flow, who themselves know how many immigrants there should be and how many of this there should be and how much of that there should be because they're all omnipotent. They're, they are all knowing and we, the people, are just so lucky to have them tell us what to do. You know, because we don't apparently. Yeah, so the cap, only spouses, minor children, and parents of adult U.S. citizens are uncapped, but their numbers reduce the cap of 480,000 for other relatives down to just 226,000. The result is a massive backlog of 8 million cases. For most countries in category combinations, sponsors will die before their relatives can immigrate. It's literally a lifelong process. Well, this one doesn't need much explaining, does it? Green card backlog for cat family sponsored categories. Yep. Look at the backlog. Look at how big that backlog is. And the capped family green cards and the uncapped family green cards. Backlog just keeps getting bigger and bigger. All right, employment-based self-sponsorship. This is only for the most elite. Employment-based self-sponsorship is available only in the rarest of circumstances. People with extraordinary ability, whatever that means, 
workers with advanced degrees or exceptional ability who are conducting activities of national importance, whatever that means, and investors able to invest not less than $800,000, and in some cases, more than $1.05 million in a business that creates 10 new jobs for U.S. workers within two years. How dumb is this? We've established, and it's still the case because they still keep looking at this, every immigrant, even low-skilled immigrants, creates 1.2 jobs for Americans. I mean, not just a minute, this is a, a worldwide thing. So, you know, in, in Sweden, immigrants come into Sweden. They create 1.2 jobs for each Swede or whatever. That's, that's just how it works. Because, again, it saves law. They're not just workers. They earn money by providing a benefit to others. And that benefit is going to be greater than the amount they're paid. That's how it works. So. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not enough, apparently. They got to create 10. 10 new jobs within two years. These highly unusual cases apply to very few potential immigrants. But even in those cases, the government strictly enforces the criteria to make them as difficult to meet as possible. In 2019, for instance, the Extraordinary Ability category had a denial rate of over 40%. Unless you think it's any better with an employer. This is the one chance where, in theory, it should be open to anyone with an employer sponsor. Hey, we got a job for him. Well... We'll pay them. They're not going to go on the dole. They're not going to, you know, be a burden on society. They're going to work for us. In practice, the procedures are so backlogged, so costly, and so time-consuming that very few employers are willing to attempt it, except for the highest-paid workers in America. Aside from a few specific occupations, Employers must advertise the job to U.S. workers. The process takes years, and even if no U.S. worker applies, very few employers can afford to keep a job open for such a prolonged period. I think I mentioned this before, but years ago, before I met my wife, even before I met my late wife, there was a, um, there was a girl I knew. She was German. And she was a teacher in Charlotte Mecklenburg schools. And I had to say goodbye to her because she had to go back home. Because she needed to prove to the United States government that she was not taking a job away from an American. So I told her just to show them an Econ 101 book. But they wouldn't accept it. They wouldn't accept any kind of proof that she was taking jobs away from Americans, not even the fact that at the time there was a teacher shortage in the Charmex school system. And that sending her back would have just made the shortage worse. So even if you're here and even if you're working, that's no guarantee you can stay. Okay, processing time. To receive an employer-sponsored green card. Yeah, uh, it, it doesn't go back any further than the Trump years. But during Trump, it kind of goes up a little bit and then it goes down. But it goes up since Biden. So again, Biden is not exactly being friendly to immigrants. Nope. There's no floodgates being opened, people. Stop talking about the floodgates. This is why nearly all employer-sponsored green cards go to people already in the United States who can start working on a temporary work visa. But the visa is capped 
at just $85,000. Another cap. You just keep running into these things. These things have more caps than a baseball park. The odds of winning the lottery and ultimately getting a visa were just 16% in 2022. But an even bigger problem is that it requires a bachelor's degree and only 10% of the world's population has a bachelor's degree. We got the lottery entrance and then the share of entrance authorized. Going down. It was even going down before Trump. It was going down under Obama. Actually went up a little bit under Trump. Not that last year, but that may have been COVID. So, but again, it just keeps going down. And Biden isn't doing anything to make it better. Even if you have a bachelor's degree, win the lottery, and convince the employer to pay for the processing. The annual cap is massively oversubscribed. There was a backlog of about 1.4 million in 2020 for a cap of just 140,000. Also, because every country has the same cap and immigrants from India account for half of all applications, the backlog is overwhelmingly Indians who face a lifetime of waiting for a green card. If you were in that situation and you really thought that getting your family to America was the best thing for them and that you didn't really have any hope in India and you were looking at this lifetime wait for a green card and just everything else is just so backlogged and capped and everything else, what are you going to do? Are you just going to sit there in India and say, oh, well, I guess my family's going to starve? Or are you going to take the chance and see if you can get to America illegally? Because even as illegal people in America, undocumented immigrants, having to work, you know, under the radar and all that, you'll still have a better life than India. You want to know why people are coming here illegally? This is why. This is exactly why. Fix these problems, and you'll have people coming here legally again. Just, just to give them a chance. Yeah, check out the backlog there. Enormous backlogs from people who received a green card. All right, we can handle more legal immigration. We can handle it. It's no problem. I've covered this in so many others. The U.S. legal immigration system is restrictive in three ways. First, the system is restrictive compared with demand. Nearly 32 million people tried to receive a green card in 2018. Just 1 million were successful. Most could not even try the process. They weren't, weren't even allowed to get started. Second, the system is restrictive compared to U.S. history. In the decades prior to the 20s, the United States routinely permitted a rate of legal immigration three to four times higher than the 0.3% currently permitted to receive a green card. And finally, it's restrictive compared with other countries. The United States ranks in the bottom third of wealthy countries for foreign-born share of the population. Even if it accepted 70 million immigrants tomorrow, it would still not surpass the likes of Australia. Yes, that's Australia. Not Austria. Australia. Which is notoriously hard to emigrate to. And it says, oh, it's so impossible to emigrate to Australia. Well, guess what? The United States is worse. Sorry about that. Had to do an edit, but I was here at this graph listing all of the different countries by the immigration they allow. 
super restrictive Australia, impossible to get to. Number 18. Actually less difficult than Canada, which is right at, which is the median, that's the middle. The United States is below even that. It's number 35 when you look at all immigrants, legal and illegal, and number 41 when you're looking at just legal immigrants. People got these crazy ideas about all these immigrants flooding into the country, and it doesn't even reach the median, even when you count the illegals. So many myths, so little time to debunk them all, because uh, I've been going for half an hour here, so it's good that um, that I'm at the conclusion here. But again, you can read the whole thing for yourself. Immigration benefits the United States, so there is no reason to place hard caps or strict categorical limits. Moreover, enforcing restrictive laws is costly and results in illegal immigration. The entire legal immigration system is actually designed not to be followed by most people, but to keep most people out. America should return to its system of openness that reflects U.S. traditions and benefits the country. That's what it's all about. It's about elitism. Oh, we want the, the rich people in, the people who can make $800,000 or whatever it was. Not the tired, the poor, the huddled masses. The people who have a, a greater proportion of entrepreneurs among them. Immigrants create more businesses per capita than anyone. Not the people who, even unskilled, create 1.2 jobs for Americans and therefore cannot be said to keep American jobs away. People have nothing to do with fentanyl because that's the stupid, insane war on drugs. These are all excuses. You want to make America great again? You don't do it by building walls. You do it by tearing walls down and allowing people to move freely in and out of the country without putting caps and all sorts of restrictions on them coming in without putting prohibitive expat taxes on them leaving. You want to make it an economic superpower? The way it was? The way it can be again? Where manufacturing jobs come back? Where all these other sector jobs come back, not just the service sector? Well, this is one of the things you got to do. On top of, you know, getting rid of the ridiculous regulations that are only there to protect the big corporations from competition. Get rid of those. Let the small businesses come back. Get rid of all the farm crap, the USDA and all that. And let small family farms sell locally without having to go through the USDA crap. All sorts of things that we can do to make this country so much better. And that includes not only open immigration, but open trade with other countries as well. And not you know, shooting ourselves in the foot, not hobbling ourselves with onerous regulations and onerous immigration restrictions. That's a big part of it. You won't make America great again as long as this is the case. So. Thank you so very much for watching. Comments for the common God, shares for the share throne. Please hit like, subscribe, and the bell, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep me doing what I do. Uh, you can join at Patreon or Subscribestar. Uh, go there, get all the videos early and ad-free and various other benefits. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, stay strong and be free.